Hey, it's Trey, and thanks for stopping by the desk today. It is Friday. It has been a very hard week. <laughs> so I am working on a Sesame Street glue book. So I found several Sesame Street books at my local Goodwill. And they were having a sale because they were getting ready to uh, recycle all the books. So all the books were a quarter. So I got several books. And I've been cutting them up as I've had time. So this is my favorite that I want to show you. That's trash. That needs to be thrown away. So, <laughs> Sunday at the park. Isn't that cool? So, my cats are chirping in the background. I don't know if you can hear them or not. But if you hear something that sounds like a cricket, that would be Willow. If you hear something that's screaming at the top of her lungs, that would be Ember. <clears throat> Ember's regular meow is... <laughs> I don't know why she screams, but she's a screamer. So uh, these are the books that I have harvested so far. The Perfect Picnic is what I'm working on right now. And I also did the Sesame Street Pet Show. And On My Way with Sesame Street. What's so funny about this is that Kenan used to have this whole set. I collected this whole set for him. And there's another set that came out around the same same time. One was On My Way with Stress, Sesame Street and the other one was a different Sesame Street. And I had all those two. And then I donated them all. So now I'm getting them back, I guess. So anyways, here's the other books I got. Hooray for Our Heroes, Insects, Bert's New Collection. So we're not going to be harvesting all of these <laughs> today. But um, I was sitting here for a few minutes and I was harvesting them, and I thought that I would jump on and say hey, because it's been a while, and just kind of talk about what's been going on and <laughs> and where I've been. So first of all, I haven't really been anywhere. I've just been working a lot. Work's been kicking my butt. It's just been very busy. This typically is a busy time of year for me. I'm a computer programmer, and this time of year, a lot of people are preparing um, for audits, or they're getting their results from some audits, so I have to provide them with details on accounts and all that. It's just fun, 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 fun stuff, so I've been working a lot. Um, I have not been working on my glue book that I was doing for glue book banter. And I was doing like song lyrics, but I think I'm going to end up having to, to scrap that because I just don't have the time <laughs> and I'm not coming up with anything, you know? So I'm limiting myself and the time that I do have, I can't work on it because I feel like, um, you know, that. Anyways, you get it. <laughs> I'm sorry. The cats are in there meowing. And it's distracting me. It is like distracting me like really badly. So the cats are six months old. And for you kitten owners and cat owners, you know... That means they have come into heat. Yay! So I got two kittens in heat. Not a very fun time in the household. <laughs> Yay! Singing in the rain. Anything on this side I want to say? Nah. I competed 
Can y'all see the scratch marks on my arm? This is from Willow. <laughs> Look at that. She was not hurting me. Those are her little tiny claws. But she was laying next to me and she would hold on to my arm where she was holding on so I get scratches. That one's probably from Amber because Amber puts out her claws when you pick her up. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. But that one's okay. I guess we're going to go with this one. Maybe I'll cut through here and we'll do that. So I think I'm going to pull up that glue book banter book back out because, I, you know, I do want to finish it. And I also had the problem that some of my images didn't print out in full. And I'm having a lot of problems with my printer, so I don't want to have to go back and reprint them. And it's going to be a hassle anyways because it's like a PDF. So to edit it and all so that I could get it to print out properly, maybe I could just go in and maybe shrink the page or something, but I don't know. I just don't want to fool with it. So do I want to just use the half images that I have? I cannot design. I'm going to have to get, I do not have a glue book for, for this yet, but it seems to me that I'm probably going to have to have a pretty big book. Because, I mean, I got some pretty big stuff. I don't have a... Nope, I don't have any journals near me. That, that reminds me, where are my journals? <laughs> what did I do with them? That's funny. What did I do with my journals? I cleaned up in here... And I moved a bunch of stuff, and now, oh, there they are. <laughs> it's like, I moved them, and now I don't know where they are. I'm trying to pull up my sketchbook here. All right, here's a regular size sketchbook. That's, dang it, I knew I was pulling something else out. So... Yeah, I could probably, if I just got a big, a regular size sketchbook. This is 12 by 9. Because my Halloween one, uh, this is so hard to pull out. I <laughs> keep pulling out other things with it. My Halloween book was like on this, which was like 7 by 10, but I mean, I could, but mm. I've already got so much fodder. I feel like if I did it in a larger book... But I really love this size. I love these size. I don't know. Let's just, I decided to cut everything out first and then decide what book. So let's just continue with that plan. That sounds great, Trey. Let's do that. Sounds good, Trey. <laughs> good talk. Good talk. Thank you for being here while I, while I speak to myself. <laughs> We had competition on Saturday in Gatlinburg. We had to wear a mask to and from the stage, but while we were on the stage, we did not have to wear a mask, which was nice. So we had just somebody come with us when we walked up to the stage, and then we handed them our mask, and we like walked on stage this way, we danced, <laughs> and then we walked off stage that way. And then they had, they had us all like groups together, like all Southern Taps, which is who I dance for, were here, and then this would be like Power Taps, you know, and all that. So they had it all spread out. They did really good. Very, very good. I was very, very pleased. Um, they did 
sent out a message that said that they had two people test positive for COVID after, and the, but it wasn't dancers, it was two spectators. Um, so hopefully, hopefully none of the dancers got it. Um, unfortunately, one of the moms on our team, she's a nurse, and she des she tested positive after the competition. But she seems to be doing okay. She, her, her symptoms are mild, but um, concerning. <laughs> she also said some taste and smell. Poor Bert. And um, any time that she moves, she, her heart rate excels so that's sad poor Bert <laughs> I just keep saying poor Bert let's do do I want the baseball players so hard guys how would y'all cut it out? <laughs> I kind of want just them, but then I look at it, and then I want, mm, I'd have to go real, real Yeah, let's do that. Because in the end, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> And that's right guys it doesn't it doesn't matter you can sit there and agonize over a decision like that forever and in the end does it even matter I mean come on there's so much paper in the world there's so many images in the world I am talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you guys I'm so bad to say, oh, I want to save this for, you know, oh, I'm going to save this book for this, or I'm not going to uh, harvest this. I'm going to save it for a journal, and then I have all these things I want to use as a journal, and then no fodder or whatever. <laughs> or like, oh, I want to do a Sesame Street glue book, and then I start getting all these books, and then not cutting them up, because I'm like, oh, I don't know how to harvest them. Or you can't make decisions because I mean you got to make a decision which side do you want what are you going to sacrifice but in the end if you don't do it <laughs> you're just you're just not getting the joy that you could That's kind of like the um, Halloween book I did. It was a last minute kind of thought. And I mean, I just went through every box of fodder that I had. <laughs> Everything that needed to be harvested and tried to find anything that had anything to do with Halloween. And mostly I had coloring books. And I thought, this is going to be horrible. This is going to turn out horrible. But I want to try it. Because I'd gotten that journal for like two ninety nine or something. And I was like, I have this. I want to do this. I have this idea about that ghoul garden. That's like, I really just want to, to know if that would work out with these coloring book images. And it worked out great. I ended up loving it. Loving it. One of the best things. So that's why when I, I went to the Goodwill sale, knowing that I was going to go and rescue some books, when I started going through all the kids' books, and I just started thinking, what other kind of special glue book can I do? And that's when I started to seeing all these classic Disney books. 
and I was all like, did I say Disney? Sesame Street books. <laughs> I did see a lot of Disney books. But, you know, the thing is, is Disney is really not my thing. Disney's my father's thing. I'm not a real big, you know, Disney fan, I guess. Like, I've never even seen Frozen. But I love Disney stuff. I think they have high quality stuff. I love, like, their lounge fly bags and, and all that kind of jazz. I love their enamel pins. Man, I would love to collect their enamel pins. They are so beautiful. But I was just like, eh, is that really what I want to do? And that's when I decided, you know what? Sesame Street is my jam. I grew up on Sesame Street. Uh, me and Sesame Street are pretty much the same age. So, <laughs> but even though this has Zoe and stuff in it, which is after my time, I still, I'm going to include Elmo and Zoe in my things. Because that was more like Kenan's. Kenan grew up more in the Zoe time. And he grew up on Sesame Street. He loves Sesame Street. So. Oh no. I'm trying to see what that would look like without the, so I don't want the blanket. There's too much blanket. So competition, I did four dances. The first dance we did was a show routine. It was of um, UT, Tennessee, football. And uh, I messed up the very first steps. I hate that. But we have we run up to the front. And um, some of the younger girls that were running in front of me. Um, they didn't get to their spot in time. Which made me get to my spot late. So by the time I got to my spot, I'd already missed a step. And it was hard to, to catch up. So it felt like forever, but it was really only like eight counts. So I screwed up like the first eight counts of the dance, which sucked. But I didn't really worry about it too much because we actually had no competition in that category. So we were basically just competing against ourselves. And it was the first time we'd ever done that routine too. So, And we had a whole bunch. I think we had... Six or eight, I can't remember now, six or eight new dancers. These are girls who have never competed before. So you're talking about a buttload of nerves. We even had like an adult on our team that had never competed before. So she was actually my dance partner. She did good. I'm proud of her. I'm proud of her for getting up there. She was so scared, but she did really good. Um... Then we did a, a, a routine that's called precision. And the whole point of precision is that you do things, guess what, as precise as possible. <laughs> that's the whole point of it. It's a couple's dance. So like I said, this girl was my dance partner in this. And, uh, you know, you have to do all your arms at the same, same time, you know. Uh, you have to do all your steps. I mean, it has to be very precise. And then you have to make all these different formations also. So, I mean, it's it's a difficult category. But we also had nobody against us in our age division. So, uh, that was a little less nerve-wracking for her. And I was actually really happy about that when I saw that. Because she was so scared. And I was just like, Christy. All you have to do is just get out there. Just as long as you can conquer your nerves and just get out on the stage, that's all you have to do. I was like, you can stand there. I was like, it doesn't matter. You, you did it. 
I was like, we're going to get the trophy. There's nobody against this. It's fine. And I was like, this is just your stage practice. So, um, so she was happy about that. Then, okay, now we do two traditional lines. And it's kind of like line dancing. If you think of line dancing, like country line dancing, it's kind of like that. That's traditional line. That's where we just all stand in our own little spaces. We don't move around. We all do the exact same dance at the exact same time in the exact same line. And we move the exact same way <laughs> at the exact same time. <laughs> and uh, we lost. We lost in that one to the other team. Two Fierce were their names. And they beat us by, oh, what did Daisy say? point one point i think or point zero one i can't remember now it doesn't matter it was very small it was fractional that was heartbreaking but then again you know good for them they won and then uh, we won traditional moving line which is where we all do the exact same moves at the exact same time but we make different formations so we are all moving different ways so, but we scored higher than them by actually quite a bit, and uh, we won that category. So that was nice, the fact that we uh, beat them by quite a bit in that category. However, <laughs> they still won overall, meaning that they had the dance that scored the highest. So out of all of those four dances, um, plus the other ones that we did, that one of their dances scored higher, and it wasn't any of the ones that they were against us. It was in another one category. Shoot, I don't remember, but whatever that category, it scored like a 0.4% higher than our highest scoring dance. So yeah, so they took our highest scoring dance, their, their highest scoring dance, and they had beat us on that. But it wasn't anything that we had danced against them in. I know it can be so confusing. So, yeah, but, I mean, it was good just to compete. It was good to get back on the stage, and I was just really happy about that. So, do I want Zoe and Elmo, or do I want Elmo and Liam? Mm. Why is that cup right there? Why can't I? Mm. I'm still just going to cut it out. So then, the one thing I really liked about competition is that it was over so quickly. Because usually we're there 8 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night, and it just sucks. It just drags on because you dance, and then you wait three hours, and then you dance again, and then you wait two hours. It's just, oh, so horrible. So the way they did it this year is they, like, took all the little kids, and they all danced. And then they cleared everybody out and they cleaned the auditorium. And then all the seniors, which is us, danced. So it wasn't just adults. It was like um, elementary kids, all the teams, all the high school teams, all the elementary teams, that. They all danced. All the school age and adults. Because there's not that many adults that compete anyways. Um, so then we all competed. And then they cleared us all out. And then uh, they brought in the next wave, which was actually the more experienced competitors. Because right now in this in this association, we're comp competing as novices. Because our studio just formed two years ago and so we just started in this association so when you start in this association you're in novice for two or three years i can't remember and then you move up to challenge which is like their regular their regular competition and so they give you like three years to kind of get up to speed or whatever but i mean the, really when you come in in that novice category those people dance just as well as those challenge people but they just give you 
a chance to get used to the rules so that, you know, you're doing the rules because it's different. It's different on the things that you can do that you can't do in other, um, in like other competitions. So every competition is different and you have to, every association I should say is different. So you have to abide by the rules of that association. For example, CCA is who we danced with, and uh, that's like ch Clogging Champions of America, I believe is what it stands for. And when you do your solo, you stand in a line, <laughs> and you do your solo. I need a soloist. Who shall be my soloist? I shall take one. Okay. So you dance, and you go up. And you dance, and then you come back back. Then the next one, they go up, and they dance. You have to go back and forth. And then they come back. And this one, then they go up, and then they dance back and forth, and you come back. So in another association that we belong to, uh, when you dance, you go, you start here, and you dance up, and then you dance, and then you come back at the end of the line, and then and then the line advances and then the next person goes and they go all the way down the line and like that. And so, so then everybody moves up. So that's, it's like a circle. <laughs> so you've got to know that. And if you don't know that and you're up there, which just happened in this competition, there was a, some kids that they went up and they danced down and they went this way. And then the next kid went up and went down and went this way. And the third kid had really weird look on his face and he went up he went down and I was like oh please don't go backwards and he went back this way and he went back and I was like yes and then everybody after that did it correctly but those two kids you know they're they didn't place because <laughs> I'm sure they got significantly the rules uh or points taken off and in fact they actually uh made an announcement after that dance reminding the kids to go straight back and also asking the um, judges if if they had any questions if they got anybody screwed up so it really embarrassed the kids because they were like I know there was some confusion on that dance and um, we had there was some uh, line switches and all that uh, kids, I just want to remind you that you just dance up and then you come back right where you were standing, okay? So let's do that. Judges, were there any confusion with that, with the with the kids that moved in the line? Okay, okay, everybody, everybody got that points, okay? You don't, you don't have any questions. You sure you don't have any questions? Okay. It's like, okay, dude, they messed up. You know, they're kids. Maybe this was their first competition. Maybe their instructor didn't know, you know? Lay off of it. It's really not a big deal. <laughs> so then after the competition, which our we started at eleven and then we were done by 1 p.m. That was so nice because they did all the the awards like on Facebook Live. So we didn't have to hang around for awards or anything. So when we were done, we were done. We were out of there. And it was nice because then me and Jeremy went down to Pigeon Forge and we played Pet Pet and had a wonderful day. It was so nice to be able to support local business and yet still social distance. They had it set up so nicely. Uh, going in, they had it the whole sidewalk up to the, uh, from the parking lot all the way to the ticket booth. They had it marked off every six feet. So you could easily, easily social distance from the people in front of you. It was so nice. And then they also had like some of the areas like inside, like for their snack area, they had it marked off every six feet. They also had the the pup pup thing where you go get your balls and stuff, of course, because that was the, the ticket thing. You just kind of went, it just kind of went on. Uh, then some of the holes that uh, had like an area between them uh, was also marked every six feet. So yeah, it was cool. 
Do y'all see these little ears sticking out up here? Look, it's a little Mickey. <laughs> Oh, I found some old shrink plastic and I was playing with it. Oh, it's just messing with it. All right, I think we're going to do these in the next three pages and I think we're going to call it done. I really love the birds. If these were pigeons, it would be so perfect. Um, <laughs> running away with the carrot. This is not how I plan things. <laughs> I like this one. I think I'm going to go with this. I need to take the kittens to go get their next round of shots. I just don't know if I'm going to go today. Of course, it would probably be easier with Amber because then I could grab her and stick her in the cat carrier. <laughs> she would come to me right now. Amber! Amber! Hello, Willow. <laughs> it's funny, if I call for Willow, she won't come. Knows her name. Where you get? Where'd you go? Why are you under my feet? <laughs> Come here, Willow. Come on. <laughs> so, oh, here's Willow Bina. Willow Bina. And uh, she won't call, come when I call her, but if I call Amber, she'll come first. She'll come before Amber will. And then Amber will hang back and kind of wait to see what's going on before she comes. See, here comes Amber now. Amber? Amber? Come here. Amber? Amber? <laughs> come here. Come here, girl. Come here, Amber. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to let you guys just sit here, me trying to coax my cat to come to me. Nothing makes you feel like a crappy cat owner than when you're trying to get your cat to come to you and she looks at you like, uh, no. <laughs> I've never had that before. It's so wild to me. I've always bonded just so completely with all my cats. Even when I've had multiple cats. But well, these two, they have each other. And everybody else is outside. Everybody else is extra. As long as they have each other. They sweet girls. Ember never did come to me because she saw that I didn't have anything. <laughs> She's like, oh, you called Willow over there and you just picked her up and you touched her? Yeah, no thank you. I know, really into being touched. <laughs> so like I said, one of the bombs uh, tested positive for COVID. She's a nurse at a like a nursing home and that just oh it breaks my heart because that means her patients probably it's probably gonna be an outbreak there. She is just like she's so upset. She's upset that she brought it home to her family. She's upset that yeah, she might have brought it to the facility but I'm like girl more than likely you got it at the facility. This is just a hazard of your job. So she's worried that she's brought it to the team. But so far, none of us are showing any symptoms whatsoever. i am kind of been feeling run down all week. But that's pretty par for the course for me when I'm around people. Because at this point, I'm just not used to being around people anymore. 
so that when I am, I always the next week I kind of feel like, you know, like I'm fighting something off. Then again, it's also Tennessee and it's that time of year when the weather starts changing. I start getting all kinds of sinus stuff going on. And it's definitely been cold around here. Ta-da! Kind of like that tree. Let's get rid of it. I've cut out some background stuffs here in the stuffs. Her and her. Throw crimes for the robins. <laughs> Look at the little ants. Aren't they cute? I kind of like them, even though they're not true Sesame Street characters. Another thing that made me decide to do it is I had found a vintage Tweedlebug coloring book. So I could get that. So that's pretty nice. And a couple of birds. Or I could do that, 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 and that. So basically the same kind of... I think I want to go with this and I kind of like the individual stuff. What are y'all playing with? Get out of that bag. Let's show them your pretty face. Mm. Hello, hello. Hello. Can you say mama? You say mama? You say mama? <laughs> You're not gonna say anything? You're not gonna say anything? You're not even gonna chirp? No, her sleepy. Her touch of my face. Mwah. <laughs> say, why are you putting me under this bright light? Say, I wanna go night nights. Poor little babies. Oh, bless her little heart. They say, Mama. <laughs> she's my little one. Yeah, she's whittle. She's whittle. Amber, are you going to come here? Nope. <laughs> Amber was sitting there and she's like, I'm out of here. Oh, Willow's climbing the back of my chair. Willow has no regard for her personal safety. She will climb into my lap and then immediately just toss herself down like a toddler. <laughs> She'll just toss herself backwards. And I have to catch her. Isn't that right, baby? Isn't that right? I can't see the cut when you're standing right there. Yeah. I can't believe my tiny little willow bean I could have kittens right now. That's why it's so important to spay and neuter your cats. Six months old, and they can already reproduce. I have kind of played with the idea of breeding Willow because she is so small, and that is a desirable trait in cats, and it's something that you can only get by breeding. You can't, there's, you know, it's an accident. There's no way to make it happen.
kind of like the stumpy leg cats. That's a genetic thing that they've been able to reproduce. But like well, teacup cats like Willow is, it's just a, you have like a certain chance of a teacup cat having a teacup cat, you know. But the percentage is really small. It's very rare. <laughs> I got her. <laughs> oh, let's see. Don't scream. Don't scream. Come here. Come back. You're fine. Amber. <laughs> Look, Amber. Oh, she's so big. I'm so big. You're a big girl. Oh, they want to see your face. Not your tail. I know. You're such a yowler. Hey, Amber. Oh, well, I don't hide your face. Okay, now you look like I now I look like I'm strangling you. <laughs> Somebody screened that shot, that, and sent it to PETA. <laughs> YouTuber strangles her cat. Did you see my mouth? <laughs> I had to pick up my mouth. She knocked my mouth off. She's got such beautiful markings. Not that she'll show you guys. <laughs> Did you see her for that half a second that she allowed me to flip her around? Before she made it look like I was strangling her to death. This morning, Amber, I'm not Amber, Willow was in a chair next to me, like a kitchen chair. And I was working on my computer because my, my office is like in the dining room. So she was sitting in a chair next to me. And, uh, all of a sudden, she decided just to flop over, and she just flopped over the side of the chair and just landed so hard on her side. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that you are not graceful at all. <laughs> she's also flipped off my lap like that, because like I said, she's got no regard for her personal safety. <laughs> she just flops. Or I'll be carrying her and she'll just just lean back all of a sudden. Or she'll just stretch out. She'll just go. Whoosh. And when she stretches, it's like liquid. It's hard to hold her. I'm not picking you up again. <laughs> now Amber wants me to hold her. And I'm like, no. <laughs> you lost your chance. I was like, I was holding you. You made me look like some kind of freak. Some cat strangling freak. Oh, I've got to pull out my recipe books and decide, uh, well not decide, but I have to pull out all the recipes for what I'm taking for Thanksgiving. What do y'all guys are, what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? We are having a small get together at Jeremy's aunt's house. It'll be his parents, his sister and her significant other who's also named Jeremy, <laughs> which makes it weird. Um, and then, did I say Jeremy's mom and dad? Jeremy's mom and dad, then his sister and her Jeremy, and then Jeremy's mom, Jeremy's mom, Jeremy's mom's sister, and that's whose house we're having it at. Cause she has uh, rheumatoid arthritis, so she can't get out. We usually have it here, but it, it, it'll be easier to have it at her house because it's hard to get her in the house here. So it'll be nice that we're having it there and it's a big space and it's not that many people. So it's kind of like Jeremy and I have been kind of just doing like social groups. Like we call it our social pod. Like the girls that I dance with, you know, they're kind of, they're people that I'll go and associate with. Um, you know, the people that Jeremy works with. <laughs> Speaking of Jeremy. Um, and then like 
you know, his family, um, his mom and dad and his sister, although we've only seen her maybe once, I think once, and it was only outside. Um, we went over to see her after we got back from Colorado and hung out with them for a little bit, but like we said, we went outside. We stayed outside. So, and we're hoping it'll be a warm enough day that we can open up the house at his aunt's house. I just love this. I just love this so much. I want to use this side, but I really shouldn't. I should just cut out this. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it quickly before I change my mind. Now I can't change my mind. This has been ASMR with Trey. <laughs> I don't know why I stopped talking, guys. So anyways, I got to look it through my cookbooks and get all my recipes. I think we're doing mashed potatoes. And I do this apple cranberry thing that is so good. It's so good. My aunt gave me the recipe. And it has like oatmeal and cranberries. And it's like a cinnamon oatmeal is the base. With cranberries and apples as a filling. And oh, it's so good. And I like to eat it as like dessert. And then you use the oatmeal like as a topping. So it's kind of like a cobbler type thing, you know. Oh man, I love it. And that's usually what I just eat for dessert. And I've gotten uh, all of Jeremy's family addicted to it as well. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's making a sweet potato casserole. That is also one of my favorites. With the marshmallows. Oh my god. Or my aunt used to make one with the brand with a brown sugar. Mmm. Oh so good. Okay. Hey, I can still keep the flowers. I can still keep some of it. Should I do it like that? And then that side like that? Hmm. Nah, I think I like this. I like that. Then we'll do... Well, I didn't mean to do that, but I guess that's what we'll do. <laughs> I forgot it was split right there. That'll work. Alright, we're done, guys. Look at all the images. I had all these ABCs at Grover. Mm, I need to start organizing these. Where is my organizing book? So let's put some of the big ones. Let's see, you're big. You're big. You're definitely big. Well, I know. I know that these are these are definitely big. These are my biggest. So and these are special. So maybe I'll put these back here. All right. I'm gonna show you what I did. 
I have this binder and I split these page protectors, I split the front portion of it so that I can pull it down and I can just stick those in there. So those are the really big ones. So let's do more uh, background stuff here. So I know this is and this are all pretty big. I'm just trying to pull some big stuff out. I never did cut your head out, Elmo. Sorry, Elmo, I left your head hanging. Ta-da! So these are all character, 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 character. Character, 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 See, and then it keeps them all together as long as you don't tip them that way. See, if I close it that way, then they'd all fall in. See, I really, I flipped that over. I really should have done that. But. All right, I'm going to organize these, and then I'm going to get back to work, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!